turn it off. Okay. <laughs> it's letting me know every time somebody enters the room. Oh, okay. Gotcha. What I can do is mute myself. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So welcome everyone to the session supporting Wikidata knowledge and skills development in the GLAM sector. Um, this session is not being live streamed, but it is being recorded. Um, be sure to check out the useful resources on the intro slide, including our code of conduct, how to join Slack, the tech support channel in Slack, and the Twitter hashtag. Um, there, this is just a meeting, so there's no Q&A function in this session, so please use either the raise hand button or Zoom chat to ask questions. Um, and now to introduce our session. So our speakers today are Joan Bodoin. Is that how you say it? Bo <laughs> well, but that's fine. Okay. <laughs> and really, there. <laughs> yeah, and then William Mowry. Um, so Dr. Joan Bodoin, Bowden, <laughs> um, is an associate professor in the School of Information Sciences at Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. Um, there she teaches courses on digital libraries, metadata, digital preservation, and the organization of information. Her research interests prim uh, focus primarily on the use and access of visual information. <clears throat> Amelia Mowry is the Metadata and Discovery Services Librarian at Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. She works with metadata, digital collections, special collections, and electronic resources. Um, this facilitated discussion brings together individuals who share an interest in developing knowledge about linked data for individuals working within the GLAM sector. The goal of the session is to explore and, ad and identify a set of useful activities and resources for contributing and editing to Wikidata that can be followed to provide this community of users a clear pedagogical path forward. Um, please take it away, Joan and Amelia. I'm just sharing my slide. So good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here with us. I know for some of you, it's probably very early in the morning. Um, so um, as Peggy said, my goal for the session was to kind of uh, explore and identify a set of activities and resources that would be useful for people that are working in the GLAM sector. And the genesis of the session actually is the result of some research that I have been involved in working with online museum collections, um, research has shown that these collections are really underutilized. However, when those materials are placed within the wiki universe, a lot of traffic is actually driven back toward those online collections. And since so many people and so many resources are involved in putting those collections online, it really seems like we should be making an effort to make sure that the public is benefiting from all that work that's been done. So um, obviously digital libraries and digital collections, many of those also have a sim similar problem that they're kind of closed systems that aren't indexed on the web. So therefore, if you can put at least some portion of your collections into the wiki universe, you'll similarly drive um, a lot of traffic to your collections, which is great. So there's clearly a need for GLAM individuals to be aware of what Wikidata can do to help increase awareness of the cultural materials um, that we're all stewards of. So thus, the reason for the session. So in terms of the format of the session, um, Amelia and I will present and lead several activities. So if you're not logged in to Wikidata at this point, you'll want to log in if you don't have a, an account. As I'm ramping up uh, the session, you, you will want to do that because we'll lead several activities. Um, and that'll take about half of our time that we've allotted for the session. And then we will then open it up and hopefully all of you can contribute to trying to pull together resources and activities that you feel would be useful for this community um, to highlight what Wikidata can do uh, for them and how they can get involved. Um, and I'm not sure if you've seen it. I'm not sure if it's still available in the chat window, 
but I have inserted a few links. I can re, um, recopy those or one link, which is the Google Doc that has the resources and the steps for the activities. So if you'd like to have those handy, um, you could certainly do that because it'll be helpful to you because I have a lot of screenshots, uh, same with Amelia, um, so that the steps to the activities can be followed. Okay, so uh, you can all see my slides, I'm hoping. Can somebody, uh, Amelia, are you able to see my slides? Yes. Excellent, okay, so just what I wanted to hear. So in terms of the outline, first I'll cover some of the basics, like what are the basic things that people need to know in the CLAM sector to uh, work with Wikidata. Then I'll go through a few activities uh, and then Amelia will lead her activity and then we'll open it up for discussion. So in terms of what I expect people would need to know before they even come to looking at Wikidata is that I would expect that they would understand kind of the basic data structure of whatever materials they're trying to work with. So we're talking about fields or elements of uh, the collection or the spreadsheet or whatever catalog that they're working with. Um, and that seems like it would be deceptively simple, but in terms of working with um, students, I've seen that many times they don't really understand the underlying structure behind collections and they don't often understand the meaning of fields or elements. So it's really useful if you could develop some type of application profile for the collection, even if it's just kind of a, a quick list of what each of those fields mean, that can be very helpful and telling if there are problems. Um, the next is that you should have some familiarity with authority controls or controlled vo vocabularies that would be useful to the collection uh, or the materials that you're trying to provide access to. And uh, finally, it would be very useful to have some basic understanding in terms of the subject content and knowledge of whatever the collection is or the items. That's very, very helpful. And then in terms of Wikidata, there are some basics um, that people need to know. And that is what is, how to identify an item, what are statements, um, what are properties and values within the statement, you should be able to identify those. Um, and then what are references and what are identifiers in an item record within Wikidata. Um, so now I would ask you all, if you wouldn't mind, to log into Wikidata, if you'd like to do the activities. Uh, otherwise, you could just follow along uh, looking at the screenshots that I've provided. So the first activity that we'll do is just identifying components. And the second one that I'll lead is uh, working with Recoin which helps you edit item records for completeness in Wikidata. So this is a screenshot of perusal. This is an actual assignment that students are given where I ask them to identify various components. Perusal is like hypothesis. It's an annotation um, system that is run online. I actually uploaded a PDF of an item page and then students highlight particular areas of the record and comment upon it. On the right, I've highlighted the Q number at the top of the record here, which is the item number or the Q number, which represents the item in Wikidata. And that is the, car, the conversation that you're seeing to the right. I'm not sure how small that type is. It's not really important for you to understand what that says, but it just leads them through what they're supposed to do. And they're asked to highlight 
uh, areas within the statements and identify uh, the item numbers, the properties, and then the value, which is also a Q number or an item number. So, whoop. So the first thing is to ident identify the item number or the Q number, which is circled here. Oops, sorry. The next is identifying the properties in the statements. And you're all aware that um, you know, the linked data component of Wikidata is the fact that you have the item record that's linked to the property um, and then the property has a value. So I'm trying to get them thinking in that way. So, oh, it's unfortunate that actually the bottom part that's highlighted actually shows the P number for this instance. So each property has a P number, which I'm assuming you cannot see. Um, which is unfortunate, but if you have the slides, uh, the slides are on the web page for the session if you're interested in seeing the P number. So the value in the statement also, if you hover over the link, it will also give you the Q number. Uh, similarly, if you move down the page uh, and you're looking at various statements, oftentimes the value uh, in the statement will have a reference. So I'm showing the P number, which is a property for a reference. So again, just kind of identifying the various components within a Wikidata item record. And then below all of the statements is a section that has identifiers. And those identifiers are linked to authority controls that are beyond Wikidata, but they're incorporated within Wikidata. So the Library of Congress authority controls is property 244. And then you'll see on the right that there is another number, and that's a Library, Congre Library of Congress uh, unique identifier for that particular authority controlled entry, but it's local to the Library of Congress. So you can see we're developing a web of information for this particular item, and there are other identifiers here, clearly. So now it's your turn. So I ask you to go to wikidata.org and log in if you haven't already or create an account and log in. And then perform a search for a cultural heritage institution of your choice. Find the item number, which is the Q number at the top of the item record. And then examine a few statements. Then find and provide the property number, the P number, and again, provide the value number, um, which is most often another Q number. And then think as you're looking through the statements, are there references present to support the values that you're finding in those statements? And are identifiers present that reference outside authorities? So that this little activity should give you a pretty good sense of the various components of an item record. So I'll give you about five minutes to work through that. Um, and then we'll, we'll come back and we'll move on to the next activity.
So you have about one more minute. Okay, uh, let's come back and we'll move on to the second activity. And just answering Marcus. Okay, so let's move on to the next. So the next um, thing that we'll work on is working with RECOIN, which stands for the Relative Completeness in Wikidata, which helps make um, uh, item records more complete. And this is just a, a link here to RECOIN, so you can see the page for it in Wiki, um, Wikipedia, I believe it is. So to perform this activity, you need to add this RECOIN gadget to your account. So in order to do that, you click on preferences, which is just to the right of your name at the top of the page. And then you will see this list of preferences appear and you're going to select gadgets. After this, you will uh, scroll down the page. There's a list of wiki-centric tools. And just above uh, the end of that list, you will find Recoin. And so just click that. And then be sure to hit Save, because if you don't do that, it won't add it to your preferences. Just giving everyone a minute to get this done. Okay. So now working with Recoin, if you log into a um, item record, you will see right under the description, very close to the, the label for the item record, this little link here, it has, um, when it's closed, you'll see the triangle is pointed to the right. And if you click on that, it'll open up this panel. And what this panel does is it tells you the properties that are missing from this particular item record. And it'll tell you uh, in terms of percentages, how many records generally have this and how, you know, what, how do it compares in this record. So for this record, when I looked at it, I saw that inception, you know, 40% of records have it and this one doesn't. So clearly that's something that should be added, right? So in this panel, it also, you'll wanna take note of the P numbers, which are over here, and then the label for the property. So you have that property ID number and you have the property label. Um, and so I thought, hey, Inception looks like something that would be useful. Um, I wonder if there is a website and yes, indeed, there is a website for um, this particular, item, which is actually located in Detroit. It's this kind of block long art installation called the Heidelberg Project. 
So there was a website and lo and behold, when I looked at the history, it has the date of when the Heidelberg project began. And there's actually two of them. There's another page that shows a timeline. So I've actually gone in and added those to this record. So this is the process by which you would follow to add a property. So if you scroll down all of the statements that you'll find in whatever item record that you're interested in working on, you'll find this, it's almost hidden, this little um, add statement with a plus sign uh, link there. So you look for that, you'll see it just above the identifier section. So if you click on it, it'll open up this panel. And this panel um, asks you to enter whatever property it is that you're interested in entering. So remarkably, in many cases, it is going to default to whatever it thinks you should be entering. And in this case, inception was there right away, which was great. But if it isn't there, and or it's further down in the list, or it just isn't appearing, you can enter the P number here, or you can enter the label. So I could have entered P571, or I could have entered the label inception, or I could select it from this handy dandy drop down list, which is what I actually did. So when I entered that, then the value box opens. And so I added the value 1986, and then I added a reference. And you add a reference in a similar way to adding a statement. This reference pertains to this particular property that I'm entering and that particular value. And you click the add reference. So I've already done it for this one. I'm not showing you that step. And then I entered reference URL because this is the official website that I took that information from and then retrieved. And that will automatically populate it with the date that you retrieved and are entering that information. So if you actually had retrieved it at an earlier time, you would want to indicate that here. Um, so that's how you add a value and a reference in a property statement. Don't forget to click publish, otherwise all your hard work will not show up. So now it's your turn to go ahead and work through this activity. So go to an item for a cultural heritage institution or another kind of item, whatever, it's your choice. Uh, click the recoin link at the top of the record, examine the listed missing properties. Um, and for your information, if you click the P link in recoin, the property uh, link, it'll take you to the property page. It's not going to enter the property in that item record. It will take you to the property page, which is useful if you're not entirely sure of how it should be used or you just want to kind of review what that property is. So find the missing property information that you're interested in working on. Scroll to the bottom of the statements, click add statement, select or enter the property you'll add in the statement, that new statement you're created, you've created, enter the value, and then add references, a reference or references to support the value that you've entered. And this can be, it can be a print-based reference. It can be a web-based reference. Uh, there's all sorts of different kinds of references. Um, and then click publish. So for this one, I'll give you maybe about eight minutes. Um, if you have any problems, uh, post them in the chat and I'll try to, I'll try to help you out. I'm gonna leave the activity steps up for you.
So I know that many of you are probably having a great time working with Recoin, but I'm just giving you the about one minute warning. <laughs>
Okay, everybody, so let's come back. Um, if you haven't finished, you can certainly finish up later on. Uh, it's kind of, I find it's editing wiki data, uh, using Recoin and a lot of the other tools and games that are out there. Um, it's a bit like eating potato chips. Once you start, you really don't want to stop. Um, so unfortunately, you get to rein yourself in sometimes, <laughs> or at least I do. <laughs> so um, now I'm going to turn things over to Amelia, who is going to look at querying Wikidata. So I'm going to stop sharing, and Amelia will take over. Go, Amelia. <laughs> Okay, let me just share mine. Okay, can everyone see slides? Yes, yes. Okay, great. So I'm going to shift gears a bit. I'm going to be talking about using the Wikidata query service to introduce GLAM professionals and students to, link, to linked data. And there have been a lot of great presentations at this conference about, you know, amazing things people are doing with linked data. I'm going to be talking about the opposite. I'm going to be talking about um, doing very simple things with an accessible tool to help beginners understand what linked data is and what it can do. As a librarian and also as someone who works with students in the library science and information fields, there's this sense they have that they know linked data is really important, but they don't know what to do with it and it all seems very intimidating and they don't know where to begin. Uh, the idea of linked data can be very abstract for the beginner. It's easy to get hung up on tools and triples and URIs, but beginners need to see the why. Why is linked data important? What can it do? They need to see that in order to get excited about it. I'm going to walk through an example of what I would consider kind of an elevator pitch for linked data, a brief walkthrough of one thing you can do with linked data. So the point is not to make anyone an expert, it's more to give them a concrete example of the power of linked data and to get them interested. So one tool I like to use when introducing people to linked data is the Wikidata query tool. You can follow along if you'd like. A link to the query tool and the queries I'll be using is located at the bottom of that um, resources document that we already shared. And the query tool is a great way to show beginners the power of linked data without them needing a lot of background in the technologies. If you haven't seen it before, this is the tool. You can run Sparkle queries against Wikidata here. It's easy entry, there's nothing to install and no setup that requires expertise. The tool also includes example Sparkle queries, which you can find by clicking on the examples button in the upper right. These range from the very simple to very complex. This is also helpful to the beginner because they can start experimenting with existing queries to see how they work. Just to demonstrate, this is the first Sparkle query in the example section. It's about as simple a query as you can get. Our subject is called item. That's what we're looking for in Wikidata. The P31 means an instance of, and Q146 means cat. So we're looking for things in Wikidata that are instances of cat. The select up at the top is what we're going to display. So we're going to display the item, which will be the identifier, and also the label of the item. So when we run this, we get our cats from Wikidata. The identifier is a link out to the information about the cats and the cat's name. I love to provide this resource to beginners. The list of examples gets progressively more complicated. These can be great for people to familiarize themselves with Sparkle. But if this were my introduction to students or to GLAM professionals new to linked data, I'd want to show them an example, another example, something that is simple enough for them to understand, but can also show the value of linked data. I want to come up with an example that seems irrelevant. And I also want the example to show how linked data can help you get information that would be difficult or tedious or time consuming to gather. Today, that example is nepotism. I will admit that I'm not up to date with all my celebrity trivia. I recently found out that Dakota Johnson is the daughter of Melanie Griffith, who's the daughter of Tippi Hedren. And that seems to happen a lot though, right? Actors are the children of other actors. 
to gather that data using traditional methods would take a lot of time. You'd have to come up with a list of actors and then research each of their mothers. Using the Sparkle and the query service, we can answer this question using a very simple Sparkle query. Line four is looking for a person with the occupation, P106, of actor. The next line is looking for a person who has the P25 or mother relationship to that actor. Finally, the next line looks at the parent and checks if their occupation is also actor. This query doesn't include any of the more complicated aspects of Sparkle. No filter, no group, no option, but it gives us a list of actors whose mothers were also actors. Querying Wikidata, it took only a few seconds to get a list of nearly 3,000 names. That's a completely different way of gathering data. We can also explore data in a way that would have been impossible using traditional research methods. Maybe after seeing all the results with actors, we wonder if there are also a lot of actors with parents in other professions of the arts. This query is almost identical to the previous one, except I've changed line six. Instead of checking to see if the parent is an actor, I'm checking to see if the parent is a writer. So this time I get fewer than 500 results, a decent amount, but not nearly as many as with other actors. So that has been the first point I would hit in my linked data elevator speech to grant professionals and students. That linked data allows you to explore data and make connections in a way that would have been impossible using traditional research methods. However, there's a second point I bring up, especially when working with students, and that is that they still need to think critically about the data. For that, we're going to do one more iteration of the same query. This time, instead of checking to see if the mother is an actor or writer, we're checking to see if she's a scientist. That gives us six results, but it's important to think about what we're getting and if it's what we're looking for. For example, the first two results are comic book characters. Kara Zarel is Supergirl. So is this truly what we were looking for? The number also seems very low and my results are missing someone who I know who well I would have expected to be there. So another bit of celebrity trivia, did you know Jack Black's mother was an engineer for NASA and she helped save Apollo 13? So why didn't that appear in these results? Uh, first, we can go over and look at the details of scientist. It says someone who conducts scientific research into an area of interest. That's possibly a narrower definition than I was intending. I was thinking, you know, someone who works in the sciences. We can also look at the data for Jack Black's mother. There we see her occupation was given as, given as aerospace engineer, not a scientist, which is why our query didn't find this. So this is an outline of my brief introduction to linked data for GLAM professionals using Wikidata queries. I introduce them to the power of linked data and what they can do with it. And I also show them that they still have to be cautious and think about the data. I would then leave them with resources about the next steps they can take to learn more and to begin using linked data themselves. So now we're moving on to our discussion section. We have a few prompts here, but we'd also love to hear about what tools or strategies you take for um, working with linked data and sharing that with other GLAM professionals. Would you, would you like me to send people to breakout rooms or would you prefer to just keep everybody in here? Um, I think since there's 60 people, maybe uh, if people go into smaller breakout rooms, they'd be more apt to discuss, although it looks like we're, we're losing people. Maybe just keeping people together. Okay. I would like to, um, again, point out that there is an online uh, Google Doc that's editable and everybody has access to it as long as you have the link. So I'm going to, um, again, put that in the, in the chat box if you're not really interested in 
um, you know, adding to the discussion, some people just are very reticent to speak or they feel like they're under the gun or whatever. Um, it looks like S Suzanne has a question for you, Amelia. Um, so that is, how do you explain inference, for example, how do you explain the connections Jack Black's mom's career could be nested under scientists? Um, that isn't something I would necessarily try to do in, in this type of environment. Um, just because the, the goal when I'm speaking to like the pure beginners in this way is to just frankly not scare them away. So I would maybe discuss the idea that there are more complicated things you can do to, to provide groping or, um, but I wouldn't want to get too much into that. It really is intended as the like elevator pitch. It's really interesting to me that Jack Black's mother was she was classified as an engineer at some point. Yeah. And you have to wonder, is that because of what her job title was or her function at NASA? And, you know, where is the dividing line between engineer and scientist? Like, are they mutually exclusive? Are they, you know, it's, yeah, it's all about, it's all about, words right yes it's very easy to dive straight into some very complicated things so i'm really curious to hear from people what um what their stumbling blocks are when they're trying to work with wikidata for me i since i'm such a i learn visually i'm a much stronger visual learner like having all those screenshots really helps me like see the steps that are involved and it's a lot uh it's very easy for for me to find that i've missed some critical step in a process uh especially if it's written even though i think i'm following along sometimes i skip things so I, i'm just really curious to hear from people like what they've found uh were problems for them for me it it ended up being, you know, I really need to see it and follow along with somebody. Um, I mean, not that I can't follow steps, but it just seems like I, I don't make as many mistakes or I don't find myself at a dead end someplace. So I'm just really curious to hear from people what they've found, um, how they learn best um, for Wikidata, because it is pretty detail oriented. Yeah, I agree, Bob. That, and that's one of the things that uh, when Amelia and I were working through this yesterday, it was something that came up. It's like, oh, you know, when I find something that I'm not really sure how it should be handled, I look for something that's very similar. Um, or there are other ways, like uh, if you're looking for location information and you know that there's another of another institution that's located like right next door, which was the case uh, that Amelia and I were working on, we could go to that other item record and see what properties had been applied for location and how they were applied and what references were used for those. So that was super helpful. So yeah, that's a great suggestion to look for another item. And I, I'm not sure, Peggy, can people unmute themselves if they're- They should be able to. If you're having okay. any trouble, just let us know. Okay. Um, I made it so you can unmute. I was gonna ask a question. So now that I'm unmuted, uh, this is Laura. 
Uh, um, the, the person who set up the Zoom meeting. Um, <laughs> so I, I've been through a few wiki data tutorials, uh, but I'm, a, I'm kind of, a, I, I think um, the idea of having an example flow like you demonstrated at the beginning is probably really good for people like me. I have a tendency to won't just want to dive in Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people do. And depending on whether you're editing an existing entry or creating a new one, you're just going to encounter things. And um, this, this can encourage some people who like to untie knots, but it could, it could discourage other people. They're like, I don't want to stop because I can't find, you know, the, the, um, uh, the entity that I want to add um, uh, as the, sub, you know, the, the end of the property of, the, of the, uh, the, the link to the property. Well, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I don't know if you, if you have it open, and you have a workflows that allow people to explore what's in Wikidata already, they're gonna run into things. Mm -hmm. I ran into, and I'm embarrassed to say, I have not had a chance to deal with it, but um, the fact that the Atlanta Journal Constitution used to be two separate newspapers. And so when you're talking about a person who was an editor, on one, but not the other, because they were actually they were actually competitors. Um, you can't really use the entry for Atlanta Journal Constitution as an employer, but that separate uh, and serials catalogers will know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, we had two two different serials that merged. Um, <clears throat> the the um, the historical Atlanta Constitution and the historical Atlanta Journal have not been established in Wikidata. So I think I posted something on um, Code for Lib and somebody gave me some detailed instructions about what I needed to do. But um, you're going to encounter this kind of thing where the data, you know, is not exactly right. Right. So how? Uh, so I'm not giving an answer here. No. But I'm saying you need to allow for this if you're uh -huh. doing tutorials that are open or where people are openly exploring things. Do you tell right. them, put this aside and go on to another one? Mm -hmm. That's true. That is and, true. Then, and then, you know, at what point do you get back to these problems and actually resolve them? Mm -hmm. and, and, and even encounter the fact that you may have to get approval for something to make a certain kind of change and you may have to wait for that. Yeah. Yeah, it, if you look at the, the um, Google Doc, I actually put a third uh, activity instructions for it in there and it's using mix and match, which is that talk about potato chips like that I have a very hard time staying away from. Mm -hmm. um, but at the very end, it's like, if you, you know, if you find that you can't do something, just move on. I mean, there's so many other ways for you to contribute, although it can be frustrating because you want to make something as complete and as perfect as possible, you know, if you have that kind of mind like I do. Um, but at a certain point, you just have to say, well, there are so many other ways for me to contribute and spend my time in Wikidata that you know, getting frustrated isn't helping you or anyone else. So like, just, just let it let it go. And if it, yeah, a lot of the times it's still in the back of your mind and then at some point in time you may have a solution and then you go back to it, right? It's hard to let go though. <laughs> it's really hard to let go. Yeah, I mean, um, I think that's definitely something that Wikidata, could be better at is when you 
are interested in a particular property to go and try to research like usage of that property and that sometimes that can be a, a, a stumbling block and I, that's duly noted and, and I, I'm not an expert in Wikidata and I'm sure there are probably people here that know a lot more about the properties and which ones would be used and wouldn't be used. Um, I guess my question is how do we make it easier for people, lower the bar so mm -hmm. that they don't get frustrated? The, just, just so you know, there we only have a few minutes left, and there are two people with hands raised. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, Zoe, do you want to unmute? Oh, I mean, um, I was just going to say real quick that um, it, it was about a stumbling block, which is um, the overwhelm. I find a lot of new editors face with all the properties that can be used, and I, I kind of mentioned this in the chat, but um, Recoin definitely helps with that. And I will say, especially for uh, glam professionals who are used to um, very like uh, complicated sometimes and stringent cataloging rules, the um, freedom of Wikipedia is definitely, it, it's so different that um, they are not sure what to do. They, they kind of, you know, they want more guidance. And I think, I know a mistake, I think I have, um, it, it's been a mistake for me not to use Recoin. In, in some of um, my past projects. And um, because I think it, it would have helped a lot with those concerns. Great comment. Thank you, Zoe. Mackenzie, yeah. Yeah, so uh, sorry, some, I'm also sort of speaking to the issue of stumbling blocks and it's sort of similar to what Zoe had said about like when you're first coming into Wikidata and like, I. This is all. This is all very new to me. Um, it's it's there's sort of that. It, it can come across as a bit daunting, and especially as you know, as Joan, as you were saying at the beginning of the presentation, you know, you know, linked data concepts can sometimes take a while to sink in, and it took it took a couple of explanations before even the concept of triples really like, oh, that that's what how this works. Okay, um, and so. Yeah, so those those are initial stumbling blocks, and for me, for me, another stumbling block is just sort of needing that environment where I know what to do with it, um, which we've sort of gotten into a little bit here as to like the this like why why use Wikidata. Um, but you know, I'll have to figure out the why for myself. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah. This has been very helpful, as has been the other Wikipedia tutorial I had that what happened yesterday. So I'm glad I'm finally getting all this experience working with it. Good. That makes me happy to hear. Thank you, Mackenzie. <laughs> Stephen, I love the he refers to linked data as hyperlinked metadata. <laughs> yeah, that that's what it is, right? So we are just about out of time. Thank you so much, Joan and Amelia, for this wonderful presentation and everyone for your um, participation. Yes. Um, feel free to check out things on Slack or Twitter, all the great ways you can continue to engage with the conference. Um, and we'll see you throughout the rest of the week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for attending. Thanks, Peggy, for being a facilitator. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> and Laura for, for setting us up with the Zoom room. Thank you. Enjoy this. I will definitely use Recoin. Yay. My next <laughs> encounter with Wikidata. Excellent. I like to hear that. That's great. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Um, will the, the recording be posted?